it's December, and as we move further down the month, we start to see the gloriously glittery beam of hope at the end of the rainbow, Christmas. But of course, when it comes to celebration, there's more than meets the eye. A house full of loved ones is always a beautiful thing, but then there's the problem of feeding them all. We're going to cook a simple but stupendous menu for this special day, getting you out of the kitchen and into the festivities. You could go through all the fuss and bother of a six course menu, but hey, it's Christmas. The first thing is that you're going to worry about on Christmas Day is obviously the thing that's going to take the longest, hopefully it'll take you the longest, is a ham. Now, assuming that you don't want to catch your own, you're going to have to go to the store to get one. So when you go to the store to get one, my recommendation is not to get one too big. Um, if you can't afford a, a very big one, what you can do is you can buy a sort of like a medium size, maybe two, three, four kilo one, and then stretch out your Christmas day lunch with like a, I don't know, like a $10, $15 frozen chicken. So as you can see, this one is already cooked. Just buy an already cooked one. Don't, don't try and brine it yourself. Don't try and be like a Nigella Lawson or a Gordon Ramsay. Buy a cooked one because when you cook one in the oven, uh, cook, uh, when you're, you know, put this in the oven, you're not actually trying to cook it because it's already cooked, you're just trying to heat it up. So what we're going to be doing is a pineapple mustard ham. Sounds a little bit weird, it's actually quite delicious. So if you come in and take a look, as you can see here, this is the rind. This is horrible, you don't want to eat this. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove it before we glaze it. So what you're going to do is you're going to just very carefully tease the edge of the rind along with your finger and just carefully work your fingers along and into and underneath that skin to reveal that beautiful fat underneath. Try and take off as little of the fat as possible because that is really good. That's going to be the star of the show. That's the bit that people are always fighting over to get. They don't want this bit, they want this bit. So, I'm, t I'm doing a little bit of damage, but you know what? It's okay, it's all right, it's Christmas. Be forgiving of yourself. If not, be forgiving of your mother, who's not necessarily Martha Stewart in the kitchen. You just gotta be understanding. It's Christmas. As you can see, I'm not using a knife at all. I'm just teasing it with my fingers until eventually, it comes right off. So that, I mean, <laughs> that if you if you know if you need a new bike seat, you can just put it on your bike seat and boom, Bob's your uncle and Sally's your aunt. So now what we're going to do is we're going to score it. You know the be those beautiful um, hams that you see in the movies with the squares. Well, that's scored. Now you're going to use just a little knife. I don't know where this knife came from. Over there, I suppose. So if you just come on in and you're going to score it. So you're going to make lines along here. So, and don't push too hard. You just let the knife do the work. Just really easily, just push. Now I know it looks like you're not doing much damage, but trust me, when it cooks, the fat puffs up and it, it, it yeah, it more or less, it, yeah, you'll see what you've done when it comes out of the oven. Right, now as you can see, I could probably get away with, mm, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be good today. So next thing, do cross, do a cross like that. So as you can see, you can see the little squares. Now, in the center of these squares, you're going to stud them with cloves. That is the traditional, beautiful Christmas ham look, is the cloves. You can also put pineapple, you can put glacé cherries. We're not going to do any of that today because that's just way too fussy. Now, I know that studying it with cloves sounds fussy, but really, honestly, it's actually quite worth it. So, you're just going to stud a clove in the center of each of these squares. Now, it's going to take me a little while to do this. So um, join me in just a few seconds. So we've studded the ham with the cloves. It looks quite festive already, 
but we're not finished. So we're going to put this in the tin and that we're going to cook it in and then we're going to make the glaze. So this actually leads me on to a really good point. Foil tins. They're easy, they're disposable, you use them once, you throw them out. On Christmas Day, you've already got enough dishes to do. If you've got 10, 12 people coming on, coming along, that's 10, 12 forks, 10, 12 um, uh, you know, knives, plates, wine glasses, you know, the last thing you want is to be sitting there all night long scraping the residue of the ham and the roast vegetables off the bottom of the tin. So use the disposable ones, I highly recommend them. So in the, in the ham goes into that foil tin and we're now going to make our glaze. This is the secret glaze recipe. I don't have it, I don't really like to tell people. Only my mum and my grandmother know. Annabelle White knows as well. So, here I am telling the world, but anyway, crushed pineapple, two tins. You can use one tin if you like, but I, I, I have to be honest with you, I, I don't measure. And I know that some chefs would say that that's appalling, you don't measure. Well, yeah, too bad, so sad. Okay, now you've got your crushed pineapple in there. And then you're going to put in some grainy mustard. Yeah, that about that much. That's about, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons. About a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And then to cut that intense heat that the mustard's going to give, you're going to put in some brown sugar. I don't know, maybe a few tablespoons. Maybe I'll put the recipe up on distortedfeatures.com. Go check out distortedfeatures.com and our Facebook page and our Instagram page. So now I'm just going to stir it up. Don't worry about measuring anything here. You're not, you know, you're not being held to very high standards. They're coming over for the presents and they're coming over for your company. So that's the focus of having of Christmas is joy, hope, and love. So that looks about right. I did put quite a bit of mustard, so I think just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna add a little bit more brown sugar. It's okay, it's Christmas. A little bit more brown sugar isn't gonna kill you. Unless you accidentally um, reached over the brown sugar and grab the cyanide. Anyway, here's the ham. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put maybe a quarter of this on it when it goes in, and then in 20 minute intervals, you're gonna take it out, you're going to keep on, you know, putting more on it, and then once you've run out, you're going to um, just keep on basting it. The more you baste it, the better it gets. Um, According to Mr. Google, I think for a cooked ham, it's about 20 minutes a kilo. So for this bird, it's a it's a four kilos. So you're looking at about 80 minutes. So about an hour, hour 20. Maybe even if you want to be on the safe side, make me make it an hour and a half. I don't know. Just, you know, if you've got a, one of those little, um, if you've got one of those little uh, doohickeys that, that read temperature, when it comes out, stick it in the thickest part of the meat, should be at least 65 degrees Celsius. So, that is our beautiful glaze. It seems like a lot, but you want it to be really, really rich. So, I'm gonna put about a quarter on to the ham, and don't worry about brushing, just use the back of the spoon to evenly distribute glaze on the fat. That looks about right. And then what you can do is you turn it around, as you can see, this, this poor little meaty bit needs some love and attention as well. So you can use the use your hands. Make sure that every little bit of your ham is getting some love and attention with this glaze. Don't worry about it falling off, you can always when you go to baste it, you're going to baste it anyway. So, in a two 
20. I think this needs, now that I can see it properly, I think it needs a little bit more. Okay, so in a 200 to a 220, if you've got bake, 200 if you've got fan bake, for 20 minutes per kilo. In the oven, it's gonna go. So as you can see, I'm cutting up potatoes. I love potatoes, I don't know about you. Ham and potatoes go really well together. But unfortunately, because of um, health, the healthy regime, you have to have something a little bit more than potatoes. So we have our potatoes. I'm just chopping them in half. Just move back and you'll see. Now, Kumra, there's always some person, some weirdo in the family who, um, sorry, my brother's filming this, who, who there's, there's always someone in the family who enjoys Kumra. Um, I'm not one of those people. As you can see from the malice that I cut them, I don't really like them that much. And they're really, really difficult to cut. Yeah, that's about as much Kumra as I can tolerate. Right, pumpkin. Make it easy on yourself. Don't go and buy a whole pumpkin and then you've got to massacre the thing. Um, buy them in pieces. Make it easy on yourself. Merry Christmas. Now, these are bacon roast veggies. So, you can't have bacon roast vegetables without bacon. So, as you can see, this is not streaky bacon. These are bacon bits, so a little bit thicker. Now these don't have, the, now when you chop these, um, you, I'm not gonna put so much oil through the potato because there's heaps of fat already on the bacon. So look, you don't have to be really even about this or really precise. You're just gonna chop them into bits like this. So the potatoes have to be in the oven for about an hour, maybe 45 minutes. I'm reckoning about an hour at this stage. Um, I think that's more than enough. Don't worry about it. Um, like this. Yeah. Okay. As you can see we have our foil tin. We love foil tins here in the Distorted Features Kitchen. Now, some parsley. Dried parsley is fine if you want fresh parsley. It's up to you, your wallet. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot here. And you're probably right. Now, not too much oil, as I said before. There's already fat on the bacon. Some salt. Not too much. Bacon's already salted. And plenty of cracked black pepper. I love black, 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 black cracked pepper. Black cracked pepper. Sally sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, now get in with these hands. Use your hands. These are your best tools. Not the knife, not the spoon, your hands. Now, get in there, as I said, with your hands and really do some damage. Don't worry if the bacon clumps together in places. If the parsley and the, you know, and the salt and pepper aren't exactly playing game with you, it's okay. Everything's going to be all right. You can always shake it, you know, shake it every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes. Well, every 20 minutes if you want. I don't know. It's up to you. I think we're just about there. Right, that's looking pretty good. I might just make sure the bacon goes everywhere rather than just one place. Otherwise, the bacon might cancel me for unfair distribution of bacon pieces. Okay, so we have our bacon uh, roast vegetables already. This will go in the oven for about an hour. Um, so, if you, so if you're going to do this with a ham, with a chicken, or a turkey, or a roast, or whatever, whether anything, um, make sure that you... Um, Work it out with your times. That ham's going to be in the oven for about an hour and a half. So maybe wait for half an hour for you know for your ham to to um, to need an hour left in the oven. 
put this on the top of the oven, um, 180, 200, 220 is fine, whatever, you know, whatever um, temperature your ham is at. So I'm going to get that in the oven and then I'm going to show you some, um, some really easy salads. The roast vegetables are done, and as you can see, you know, some bits are more cooked than others. That's okay, they look really good though. I think that if you're, wow, yummy. You can see those pieces of bacon are real, have really let their flavor go into the, into those potatoes and the kumra, and I'm mashing this potato without wanting to mash it, but hey, it's all right, it's Christmas, who cares? Let it be. In the world, in the words of Paul McCartney, let it be. I'm going a little bit more slow than I would like, so we're just going to use the help of a spoon. Now, if you wanted, if you had very forgiving friends, you could literally, <laughs> you could just take the potatoes and the roast vegetables and all that to the table like this. And as I go along and I'm doing this, I'm starting to think that's probably what I should have done. But hey, it's okay. It's looking really good. The important bit is that it tastes good. I mean, it looks good, don't get me wrong. It's rustic. Mm. Little bit of a persuasion there. There's a little bit of bacon there. Mm, that's my name on it. Now, finish off with a little bit of parsley on the top. Mm. Oh, doesn't that look fantastic? Take a look at that. A little bit charred here and there, but aren't we all? Now, when it comes to slicing this bad boy, it's actually, it actually makes it easier for you to slice it in segments. Now, what that means is that you cut it into, into um, well, into segments, as I say. Usually I'll chop it into two or three segments and then slice the segments. Everyone has a different way of doing it. That's okay. It's Christmas. So, segment one. Chop another one. Just watch out for that bone. You're cutting along the bone. Right, segment two and segment three, but we'll leave segment three for another time. We'll just do this, these two segments here. So, use tongs if you want to, but if you want, you can always use the traditional, the traditional fork. I'll get, I'd, I'd get it out, but I don't really want to at this point. Slice nice and thin. Slice some thin, some thick. Everyone likes something different. Make sure they're all getting some of that beautiful fat on the front. Like we say, that's our favorite bit, right? That's the bit that everyone's fighting over. Okay, and now, instead of having to faff about, one trick you can do is just, uh, This may work or it may not work. One, two, three. Whoa, that was a close one. Okay, so getting on the plate. Let's quickly slice segment number two. Well, segment number one, technically, but who cares? Mm. 
as you can see, my hands are starting to get tired. We all get tired, but it's okay. It's Christmas. Oh, that looks maze balls. Make sure you put the lovely glaze bit on the top. Some of the glaze, thread it around there. The little bit of the glaze here, still really good. Dot it all around. Oh, a little oh, wrong side, it's not the TV side. Right, take a little bit of this glaze. I really hope I don't get a piece of clove, otherwise you're gonna see another side of me. Mm. No kidding, it's really good. Okay, so there we have it. Our mustard pineapple ham. Merrily, merrily, snows where we want to be. Come take a ride with me. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, you stare.